Hi, this is Tim Young with Elevate Software, and today I'm going to give you a brief demonstration of the Dataset Manager functionality in the Elevate Web Builder IDE. The Dataset Manager is located in the bottom right hand corner of the IDE underneath the Project Manager, and with it you can both create new datasets and remove existing datasets. To show you how you define a data set, I'm going to actually use an existing data set that I've already defined. I'm going to double click on it. The first thing you define in a data set is the engine type and then the data set name. Both of these are grayed out because it's an existing data set. But the engine types that you can currently use are the DBISOM database engine and the Elevate DB database engine. Both of those are products from Elevate Software also. The description is just a general description. If you click on the Connection Properties tab, the connection properties will be specific to the database engine that you're using, so you'll see different properties and you'll have to consult your database engine uh, manual to determine what the various settings should be set to. There is a Test Connection button that you can click on to verify that the connection properties are set properly. I'm going to go click on Row Source. For the row source, you can specify a direct table uh, or view in the database, um, or you can specify an SQL query um, using the syntax that's supported by the database engine that you're targeting. Um, you can also use parameter names with default values. Uh, this is a syntax that's specific to the dataset manager, and it's done this way so that if it is uh, referring to a database engine that doesn't support parameterized queries or does not support discovery of data types for parameters um, or any kind of functionality along those lines that you can still use the parameters properly for the data set. In addition, the uh, query will require a base table name for updates um, so that the data set manager knows how to uh, update the particular table. So we're going to go and click on Preview, which will then allow us to see what's in the actual data set and make sure that we have the right settings and that we're pointing to the right table or query, in which we are. So we're going to go ahead and cancel. Now I'm going to show you how to do a very quick database application using the Dataset Manager. So we'll click on New Project, click on Visual Project with Form Support. Do a little housekeeping here first. Change the position of the form to desktop center. Change the caption of the form. We're going to change a couple project options here. Give the application a title. Set the height of the desktop to auto height. And so that's done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put a grid on the form. We're then going to add the data set. Now this is extremely simple to do because you can simply just click on the data set that you want, drag it, and then drop it onto the form. As you can see, if we double click on the data set, all the columns are automatically pre-populated from the dataset manager. If you look at the dataset name property, that is the actual dataset name that is defined in the dataset manager. This property is important because it's used by the local web server and the dataset manager to make sure that you link up with the proper dataset. If you don't have the proper dataset name, then it will uh, cause an error when you try to run the application and, and load the dataset. The name itself is uh, just the component name, which is used with uh, linking on the, uh, the actual form. What we're going to do here is click back on the grid. I'm going to go ahead and, and change the allow column header clicks property so that the grid will allow us to click on the headers and do some automatic sorting. We're going to go ahead and just point the data set property to the products one data set. Again, that's the component name, not the data set name. And we got that set. So we only have to do one more thing to be able to display the data. And that is we're going to go to the forms on show event. 
and we're going to add a, an event handler. And we are going to type in database load and the component name of the data set. Now the database variable here is an object instance. It's a singleton object instance that is in the web data unit. It's created automatically and it controls all the transaction handling and it automatically registers any data set when it's created so that you can iterate through all data sets that are in an application. So now that we've got that defined, if we go ahead and click on run, it's now going to ask us to save. Call it DB app name for the main unit. It already exists, so we'll overwrite it. And do the same with the project. So it's going to go ahead and run. As you can see, the data was automatically loaded through the load method that we put in the form on show. So all the data is here. We can do things like automatically sort on list price. We can sort on description if we want. So we now have a data set that can load but it doesn't actually update anything yet because we haven't added, actually added any transaction functionality. So we're going to do that now. We'll close this and go back to the form and we'll click on the data set. Now what we're going to do here is the general idea is we're going to start a transaction before an update starts. We're going to roll back the transaction if the update is canceled and we're going to uh, commit the transaction if the update is saved. So we're going to do before update. We're going to say database start transaction. And we're going to make sure to. That should be true. We're going to make sure to return true so that the update will proceed. And let's see. And then after. Save, we'll go ahead and commit. And in the after cancel, we'll go ahead and roll back the transaction. Okay, now before we run this again, I've got the actual uh, table that we're updating. It's a DB ISOM table again in the open in the database system utility. So you can see here that the See the label maker product has a description of label maker. We're going to change the description on that to something different. So let's bring back up the IDE. We'll go ahead and run this. And we're going to go down to label maker, put it in edit mode, and let's just add that it uses plastic labels there. So we just updated the Label maker description. If we go back to the database system utility and hit refresh, as you can see, the table has been automatically updated. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, it's pretty easy to do. You would probably have a little bit more complicated transaction handling in your application, uh, depending upon uh, how many tables are involved, uh, master detail relationships, uh, those types of things. But uh, the basic uh, architecture is still the same no matter what. So if you have any questions, as always, uh, you can ask us at support at elevatesoft.com. And thank you for your time.